Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Media True Nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where we have taken care of the Holy Roman Empire, albeit at the cost of our immortal soul, because, well, we didn't do a deal with the devil, but we did manage to get ourselves excommunicated, so the Pope's kind of kicked us out of Catholicism for now, but the Pope is getting on a bit, so I'm kind of hoping potentially we might actually be okay. So the Pope's got some loads of really massive armies. The Pope's got tons of massive armies around here. And I did hear he'd gone to war against flipping Byzantine. So possibly whoever's got this fortune under siege right now, it might be the flipping Pope. The Pope might be going on a rampage, damn it. I probably don't want to be on the bad side of the Pope right now. The Pope's just going around kicking ass and taking names. We've got Bran still under siege, but that's fine. We've got reinforcements coming down as fast yeah. as we can. We so they'll be able to get here sooner rather than later, long before these guys manage to get into Bran itself. And with the Imperials taken care of, well, maybe we'll leave it one turn to see if the, uh, the rebel armies all disperse. And potentially, the Imperials and the Hungarians might be able to do some of the work for me, which would be very, very nice indeed. But we've got a whole bunch of big armies around here that can suddenly, I would say, barrel eastwards and knock out Vienna and then Budapest. So we'll be in good shape there, including we've got a good army right here holding a bridge immediately. If the Hungarians decide to come and attack me there, we'll be able to wipe out some of their troops and leave the door wide open to Vienna. We've got another army over here in Spain ready to go and smash those guys because their army is stuck at sea, having been chased off by mine. They've made some very, very bad decisions wow. there indeed. So we'll see what we can do there. But first, there's a very sad bit of business that needs to be done, which is... Carl Bengtsson, the man who was too glorious for the Danish Empire, sadly needs to be eliminated. We've sent the force to take him out at this point and... Can I attack... Wait, what? He's... He's right there. He's... Oh my goodness. These guys don't even dare attack him. They can't. Why... Why can we not... Just... Just, just attack him. Just, just attack him. There we go. It took some encouragement. Captain Hardknut doesn't actually want to attack Carl Bengtsson. And I can't blame him. Carl Bengtsson was a true hero. But tragically, it needs to be done. Right, where is he? Where is the traitor? He's... Oh, he's weirdly over there. Okay, hang on. Where are you hanging out? You're just hanging out over on that side, are you? Okay. Oh, he identifies as Scottish now. Oh, blimey. He had such respect for the Scottish. After his war that he fought against them, he decided he wanted to become one. All right, fine. Blimey. Right, well, let's just get our troops moving in this direction. We can just start attacking his lads too. After all, I've got the light cavalry, so I should just be able to chase off his lads and stop them shooting me too much while I just get into position. Though actually, he's got the mercenary crossbow lads, so actually, they've got the... They've got a good advantage there. Hang on, you just... You guys just get over here. What are you... Wait, how are you redrawing up here? Wait, what? What is going on here? Right, so we've technically got a shot at his lads right now. Let's just slow things down here. And yeah, let's just start chasing these guys off. Because we just need to chase off the mercenary crossbowmen. I think both of my archers actually have a shot at him. But yeah, let's just get the scouts moving forward. Just start chasing off some of these lads. The mercenary crossbowmen are the most dangerous ones. The crossbow militia, not so much. And also way worse on the armoured side. So let's just get my scouts forward and just start chasing these guys off. If we can get an actual charge bonus in, that'll probably do a fair good amount of damage there. So just hit those guys in the back. They might break immediately. Sometimes these guys do. Wavering, wavering, wavering. Down to 91. No, back to shake them. But that's fine. I'd like you guys just basically keep firing, please. Just keep firing regardless. Just always fire on the mercenary crossman. I want them out of the way. These guys are steady for the time being. Let's just back off and then slam into these guys again. They are pursuing technically. Right, back over here. Now they're falling back, interestingly. And yeah, now we're shooting these guys in the back. That'll do some good work. And these guys down to 70, 60, wavering, they've got to be, they're not quite broken, blimey, well done. Right, back off, you guys, what have you guys got a shot at right now? Technically, you guys have not got a shot at anything. Right, just pull forward a little bit here, everyone just run forward slightly, we need to get into position. His, oh dear, oh Carl, Carl, are you starting to realise, nope, he's heading out, he's heading out into the heather, not quite though, come on, come on Carl. It's not too late. Come back to the light side, Carl. Join us. Join us back on the good side. Let's just get my scouts over here. I'm pretty sure I saw the mercenary crossman on this side. Let's just get my scouts over in this direction. We can just start peppering him. I've brought some Welsh spearmen. So I've actually got some spearmen to help deal with Carl himself. Mercenary crossman round here. Let's just chase them off a little bit. And uh, starting to just gently tap into him. No, don't let my light scouts get involved over here. Just round here, round here, round here, round here, round here. Yep, there we are. Down to 40. 
Carl is not giving up. He's not flinching. We're literally shooting him in the face. He's just like, I don't care. I don't care. I would rather die free and Scottish than serve an incompetent Danish king. And quite frankly, I don't think we can blame him. Skapti is pretty bloody incompetent. And he's going to help his friends. He is willing to turn his back and be shot in the back in order to help out his friends. Not even his friends, just random mercenaries. That's how much of a good man, how much of a good man that Carl Bengtsson was. He was willing to accept being literally shot in the back to just help out some random guys he just hired the day before. Oh, we got the charge coming in. That's fine. Get the Welsh spearman on him. Get the Welsh spearman on him. We had to actually bring in... Uh, Welsh people to help out with this, unfortunately, because the Danish just weren't actually willing to fight Carl Bengtsson because they consider him a big damn hero. And I think when the history books are actually written here, I think we won't actually consider Carl Bengtsson a traitor. I think in this period, maybe he will be considered the only true Dane, the man who was willing to stand up to King Skapti and say, no, you're an incompetent bastard, stop it. And in come the scouts to close the trap. The Norse swordsmen obviously are giving it their best. They don't even want to fight this man. Mighty Lord above, we have captured the enemy's general. And down Carl Bankson goes. Oh, bless. Bless you, Carl Bankson. Maybe he isn't dead. It did say fallen. They did say captured. Maybe he's not really dead. Maybe what is actually going to happen is now we're just going to gently quietly just give him a retirement we're just gonna like shuffle him out of the battlefield we're just gonna set him up in a nice house in edinburgh maybe like that big old castle that's on top of the hill or whatever and we'll just keep him there and one day the danish empire in the age after the tyranny of skapti will be ready for the return of carl banks and I have to come back wearing a comedy mustache or something but i think we haven't seen the end of carl banks and i think he's still out there the only real dane of this era Oh my goodness, I think it's just happened. Would you believe after that battle in which Carl Bengtsson mysteriously fell and was captured, but then sort of disappeared and no one really knows where he went, suddenly there's some new guy who's just actually showed up. Captain Hardknut, a man who we'd suspiciously not really heard of before today. And that's a suspiciously similar portrait to the one I think that actually Carl used. He's just had a flipping haircut. Right. Hardknut Hunmark. I suspect this might well be Carl Bengtsson out for revenge. Now, there is one thing I could theoretically be worried about, which is at this point, uh, people who the Pope likes could request a crusade against me. Now, that's entirely possible. It's been a while since last crusade, so it's totally time for another crusade, and I've been excommunicated, so I'm a legitimate target for that right now. However, if they were to do that, I'm not sure who's actually capable of putting together a good enough army to do it. The Venetians, but they're allies, so hopefully they would stay out of it if I'm lucky. The Portuguese have nothing, two cities. The Spanish have two cities. France is reeling, and I'm about to basically smash them a bit more. Hungarians still have some strength, but I'm working my way through them right now. Honestly, I think not even a crusade, even if literally everyone joined it, could stop me at this point. The Pope might be able to get some gains in northern Italy. He's got some damn good armies here, but we'd have to see about that. It's possible, though. And don't forget to give our house its actual flipping... Oh, yeah. Don't forget to give it those flipping dock lands. Very, very nice indeed. Right, time to see what happens next overnight. In particular, I'm curious about where the Mongols are going. Because they seem to be really in a hurry to be sprinting north. I'm not really sure where they're going, but they are. Together with, yeah, what exactly the Spanish are going to try and do to get their force back down to protect their capital. And the Portuguese just have a big army chilling out here too. Not sure what they're up to. And the French, if they position themselves correctly, we could be looking at the end of the French, or at least the French within France, next turn. Right, let's crack on here. Ah, yes, of course, you go to Milan, help out with public order there, please, lovely. Now, what is France going to do? Because this is their last chance to organise the defence of Dijon. All the Byzantines are coming in. If they wanted to offer me an alliance... Wait, hang on, they'll probably break my alliance with Venice, because they've got to still be at war at this point. Right. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea at all. Right, in come the Moors. We've cleaned out all their forces on Corsica. For the love of God, Moors, come on. Just offer me peace and I'll take it. Because sometimes you... Nope, in comes another one. No, he's changed his mind. Can't blame me. Probably saw the giant pile of Moorish skulls. They're just littering the beaches at this point. Uh-oh. Remember those massive forces I just mentioned? 
Uh, they seem to be heading north in a hurry. The Papal States do seem to be moving their troops towards my territory. That could be a concern. That's pretty much the... Okay, seriously, where are you... I think they are going to Trebizond. They're absolutely obsessed with going to burn Trebizond right now. Right, maybe we'll hold off gifting them a Desert or trying to. They won't necessarily accept it. Um, Until we see what they're planning to do exactly. Because whatever's going on, possibly maybe their old leader's dead and they've got a new dynamic young leader who's got a new plan. And the plan is, let's burn Turkey to the ground. Maybe this whole standing perfectly still in the desert and bumbling backwards and forwards for the last three decades thing isn't the most mongoly thing we could do. Maybe, possibly, we should go and do something else. So we'll, we'll have to see about that. And we've got ourselves a suitable husband has just come in. No, but he's 45, so I don't think so. Uh, that's too old to be married into the family. I'd rather have someone much younger. So, he's being turned down. Innsbruck gets a swordsmith's guild. And at this point, we have got Damascus. That is not the priority right now. The one offense, we could just finish off the bloody Egyptians once and for all. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. We've got an earthquake. Oh, dear. Right, 6,000 people dead in Alexandria. Right. Possibly we're seeing a bit of divine disfavor from the whole excommunication thing. So we've got... We literally had two simultaneous earthquakes. Blimey. On the plus side, that gets the population way down. That actually is good for me as far as I'm concerned. That helps with public flipping order. Cardinal reports. And I'm going to guess that... He just promoted a cardinal from Denmark. Right, well, I guess we still... Actually, I haven't even looked at that. I think actually we've been paying not much attention to that. I think actually there's a bit of a problem with the Cardinals College right now. I don't think I actually control that much of it. Oh, Yeah, possibly... Actually, I only have flipping three cardinals. If I throw my weight behind the Venetian guy, though, we can still have a very pro-me sort of guy, which I'm all in favour of. Like, the important thing is, it's not Portugal. But if I just throw my votes behind Venice, and then the other votes are divided, yeah, actually, we should be okay. We should be all right then. Okay, we don't have the balance of power to force myself to be Pope, but I can have... Okay, why do the flipping Turks hate me? I've done literally nothing to them. This is my territory. Now you're standing in it. Right, Godfrey the Handsome, could you just go and deal with Jerusalem for a bit? There we go. That's right, put the bloody fear of God into them, why don't you, with your utter terrifyingness. Right, nothing else dramatic there, but I should probably get a, a spy if I've got one heading south sooner rather than later. Oh, Milan's in a lot of trouble. Milan's in a flipping lot of trouble. That's just not looking good at all. Right, excommunication, religious unrest, unrest... Distance to capital. Squalor. Oh, bloody hell. Right. How are we going to sort all this out? Well, let's just get a city hall under construction. That's not a bad idea. Uh, hang on. What about the religious unrest? What's bloody going on in that regard? There's... How is there religious unrest going on here? There's 2%. Well, I guess technically it's... It's 98% Catholic and we're not actually Catholic anymore. We're like the Church of Denmark. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Yeah, everyone's suffering from that, unfortunately. Excommunication a bit and religious unrest a bit, just because of the whole everyone's Catholic and we're not. So we're just some sort of independent thing and ooh. You want us gone, well, this is good. This is very good. The Spanish appear to just be up here. Come on, sing them, sing them, sing them, sing them, sing them, sing them, sing them. No, they're heading north. Victory. Okay, they headed north. I've got an admiral right here. It's wow. Admiral Carl. Oh my goodness, suddenly all the competent people are called Carl. I think we've just witnessed the birth of the cult of Karl. And soon, soon the entire Danish Empire shall be Karl. Right, get over here. Now sink these bastards. Clear victory. Admiral Karl just literally killed the Prince of Spain and his entire army by sinking it in the Irish Sea. Admiral Karl, you are truly the greatest of all of us. Right. Well, that's bloody good news. You, get onto the bloody road, please. Wait, why are you going so bloody slowly? Is it just because you had to cross mountains? Can you get here next turn? No. Wait, what? Enemy. Why are you so... Will shall be there are literally roads here. I'm not sure why his... His movement is so slow. We okay. Fine. Never. That's interesting. They're rapidly retraining troops as fast as they can. I think they've realised they've made a horrible, horrible mistake. And yeah, the French forces are vaguely standing threateningly in the I Pyrenees. But it's just mercenaries. And Toulouse can easily see them off. In fact, oh dear. Right. 
I think it's the end of the French in France, quite frankly. And actually, first we've got to... Okay, yeah. first we've just got to get rid of these bloody rebels. We just need to see them off. I'm just going to auto-resolve that. Yeah, clear victory, and they'll just auto-die as a result. That's fine. I'll just repair these guys down the line. I can't be bothered dealing with every single rebel fight. So let's just start clearing these guys out of the way. What else do we have in terms of rebel forces here? Uh, as in former... Well, there's one tiny unit here. But that's, that's nothing. Probably, I think we can just about handle that. Yes, maybe we'll just get you guys out of the way. And clear you out too. Lovely. And I think there's another one down south somewhere. Actually, that reminds me. What's the state of these places? These are... Ah, these are good places. Good. Let's just get in production. Actually, there's... Something good going on here. Ah, Swordsmith's Guild. Fine, so I can retrain all the weapons as well. That's nice. Well, let's just focus on the the injured laddies first. Let's just get them all healed up before we get into improving weapon quality. And as for Burn, yeah, what's the state of Burn? Ah, Burn's a bit more basic. It's a fortress, but it still basically just has the stuff of a castle, really. There's nothing too dramatic going on here. Right, I can still retrain some troops, though. Yeah, we got some basic stuff starting to come in here. And it's going to take a while to do that just because, yeah, it's going to take a while for the troops to actually be available as in the uh, in the recruitment pool. So that's fine. We'll just let that happen over time. We'll have a big army here. But I would say, ooh, there's just some random guy here. And sadly, the Hungarians did not attack me here. But that's fine. We'll just basically slowly push them further and further out. You get over here and then murder this guy and then head round to two here. This guy is determined not to attack, which is kind of annoying because these guys are just getting weaker and weaker. But probably still better to wait for reinforcements. We need to get something moving down south. Oh, actually, there's there's these gits as well. They're a bit on the annoying side. Right. I need to come up with something that can take out this force and then start swinging south afterwards. I don't want these flipping Hungarians here. Let's start building a new army right here. So, Karl Slember, we just need to build something out of whatever he's got. Right, number one, these troops here. That's some good spearmen, crossbows, and cavalry. You need to provide some heavy infantry for this guy. Right, that'll do as a starting point. Not perfect, though, is it? No... Not great, but all those crossbows will be useful because probably these guys have got some flipping uh, dismounted feudals because mysteriously all the Hungarian armies just seem to be swarming with them. Ah, Magdeburg swarming in some extra guys we could call upon. These guys, not so much. I just need to find... I just need to find some flipping... Okay, we're going to have to go for the damaged guys just for the sake of having a little bit more of a front line in this here army. This isn't great, but it'll have to flipping do. Maybe a bit more fire as well, and these guys will hold the line for now. That'll have to do. Right, you get up there, try and deal with these guys. You get in here, hold Nuremberg for the time being. Yeah, this is a little bit on the scrappier side than I'd like, but it'll hold for the time being. Because now we can turn our attention pretty much entirely to Hungary. Which will be very, very nice indeed. Though we should probably also just keep an eye <laughs> keep an eye on these guys. Just, you know, keep the diplomats heading up here. And all of that. And you just now loop round here. Just try and keep an eye on whatever the bloody hell's going on. Bantu has just decided he really, really wants Trebizond down. And we've got the really, really good Russian veterans coming down south as well. Though now, rather worryingly, they're running south as the Mongols are running north. So, I don't really want to meet the Mongols in the open field. You never want to actually fight Mongols in the open field. It's just a terrible idea. But still, one big thing that needs to be done now. The end of the French in France. And that's going to mean one big battle against their huge but fairly flimsy army that they've got here in Dijon, together with their king, King Henry the Mean. The king who I actually made king of France, you may recall. I killed his father specifically because he asked me to, and then he stiffed me on the pavement because I didn't kill him in the right way. So in all fairness, I feel like this isn't really murder, it's debt collection. And yes, indeed, the French are willing to come out. My 2,000 men versus their 3,000. I've got artillery, they don't. I've got heavy infantry and long-range missiles, albeit not many. They've got short-range missiles and crappy troops, but they've got flipping loads of them. This is gonna be a bit of an interesting one, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it will be. Anything you've got in terms of morale, by the way? No, minus one morale there. And minus two morale together with minus six from General's hit points. Very, very nice indeed. We might be able to snipe him off with the artillery, in fact. 
Oh, another minus two morale from Disgusted with Blood. Yeah, I remember this guy being absolutely flipping terrible. Uh, another minus two from Slave Superstition. He's got plus two morale from everyone's friend, but he's still like minus six overall or something. So basically what we conclude is his troops, though numerous, will literally fall apart at the first time they actually get involved in combat. So we should probably just charge them because we should just be able to wrap them up so easily with a single charge. Like it'll be more like Rome than Medieval 2. This one group of knights should be able to wrap up the entire line in seconds. Oh, this is going to be fun. Right, let's kill the bastard. Now, nice big flat battlefield. That works for me. Because I've got the artillery. Hopefully they'll just spawn right in the middle. And I think the town is over there. So he should come out of that. That'll be fine. Right, let's just draw things up nicely here. Now, we're going to want a nice wide line here. There's a good chance that they will have a good wide line too. At least they will when the main forces show up. Just shuffle that a little bit forward. That'll do. Actually, maybe that's not quite in the centre. There we go. That's better. Artillery, of course, at the back can just shoot over the heads. Those guys need to be in just, uh, hang on, normal and no, not rotting cow carcass. Normal, normal and normal. And all of you guys can just be on fire at will. And then finally, yep, our leader and our backup. Good, good, good. That is good enough, I'd say. Now, where are they? They are, ah, okay. His army is, in fact, over there. Uh, so his army started over there and then the... The reinforcements are coming in. Ah, that's the reinforcements over there. Fine. So he understandably decided he wanted to start on the top of a mountain. But now he's sort of changed his mind. I think he's just turning to face us. Well, this works. Let's just quickly bring my troops over here. All I'm going to do is ignore that force over there, which isn't the biggest force anyway. And I feel like you should be moving. I feel like you still kind of move with everyone else, please. And we'll just take out the reinforcements as they come. Because that will work just fine for me. In come the reinforcements now. So let's just quickly start. Yep, there we are. Are these guys actually going to come down off the hill? If they come off the hill, if they want to give up their position, they're welcome to. I'm just going to have these guys form a nice long little flank here just to make sure everything around here is safe. So then I'm coming up the hill over here. Lovely. This should soon have range. There we are. The trebuchet should be free to fire momentarily. These guys are now coming up on us. They are. Are they actually moving down? Are they coming down the hill? They are coming down the hill at us. Right. Okay, we're kind of squeezed in a little here. And the trebuchet also isn't firing. Despite the fact it's it's got a shot. Okay. What's going on here exactly? This isn't quite what I was expecting to be seeing. He's going to say, ah, finally. Okay, possibly it was just not quite in range. Now, really, I want the trebuchet and all my catapults to start nailing this guy. Because if anything scratches this guy, he will die immediately. So that's absolutely fine. And I've got the long-range fire that I need to take care of this. So the militia are running forward. That's absolutely fine. Straight into the fire of all my crossbows. I've got some cavalry ready to charge in just to chase them off for the time being. Lovely. And they should break almost immediately. These guys are slowly coming up, but it should be fine. I'm just going to bring you guys over here. Let's actually just have, if we can, yeah, focus the catapults on, like, the, the grouped together infantry over here. So these guys are now just going to come over here. These guys should, like, break immediately because their morale is so bad. In fact, I'm kind of amazed you haven't already. Uh, one of you... Okay, one of you's gone. One of you has already gone. And then one of you is... Okay, two of you have gone. Right, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. Don't get too far ahead of myself there. There's Mercenary Crossman. Let's just go and deal with them. Make sure they are out of the way. At this point, we're just... Any Ooh, that was a good one. That was a nice shot right there. I mean, these are town militia. These guys head over here. Slam into you. Shaken and down to wavering and gone. Right, in we go. And you guys are also naffing off. Right, that front line's not doing a thing. Time to turn my cavalry over here. So probably at this point... Oh, my guys are taking a battering, possibly from his indirect fire, I'm going to guess. Right, round here. Peasant crossbowmen. More militia crossbowmen. Over here, Trebuchet's just firing at something over on his side. Now just basically time to start seeing off 
you guys. These guys have no leader at all, I don't believe. So these guys should pretty much break immediately. You guys, by the way, should be in guard mode. Uh, if they basically decide to engage, I'm just going to pull back and then just hit these guys. Right, now just slam into the side of these peasants. I just want these guys seen off one by one. This line's coming up on mine. These guys have run off immediately. Just keep my feudal knights dancing. That's town militia, but they're already wavering. Yeah, this is going pretty well so far. Right. And everyone is just firing at this point. This force is now... Ah! This force is no longer seemingly wanting to take me on directly. This force is now sort of skirmishing to join up with that force. So instead, I'm just going to charge into these lads. And these guys... Yeah, fortunately, these guys are now not on skirmish mode. So they're willing to just stand and fight at this point. If you want to charge into flipping Norse archers, you go right and try ahead. Because I don't think it's going to go very well for you. They've got some indirect fire coming from over here. Just need to see that off for a moment. These guys will almost certainly break very soon indeed. Right. And this cavalry is just wrapping up all of this very, very nicely. These guys have got to be not keen on standing and fighting too much longer. Right. What else do we have? This side is not quite done. They've still got some indirect fire that could cause me some trouble, but for the most part, probably time to turn our attention over to here. This is just... Oh, Sergeant Spearman breaking. Lovely. These guys don't know what to do, do they? No. Right, okay. Trebuchet. Focus your fire on the general's bodyguard. If we can just get anything on him, he's done. I mean, one over here, we've got crossbow militia. There's a big opening on this side, though. Probably I should get my feudals over here. I don't really want to risk my king behind enemy lines just yet. Yeah. I'm going to bring him back over here. And I'm going to send instead my lad over in this direction to just start chasing these guys. Oh, yes! That's just what I wanted. The trebuchet is completely knackered him. Nice. So, the French king, Henry the Mean, is dead. I will consider our debt settled, my good man. And in comes my own leader, who's now... What? Oh, good. That was the second... I was about to say, did my guy just die on the first charge? From, like, stepping on a thorn or something. No, 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 it's fine. It's 100% fine. Right, time to just basically start charging him. At this point, I think it's time to... Oh, they're just breaking the moment. Screw it. Get him in. Get him in. Get him in. Just everyone, just get in there. Get in there. I think there's some spears on this side, actually. Uh, no, I think they're the other side, unfortunately. Right, everyone just charge forward, because these guys aren't skirmishing anymore. But they're just breaking so flipping quickly. Right, Get over here. This is town militia. And Lancers down. That should be them breaking immediately. They'll just give up like now. I can't imagine they're going to stand and fight. That's you guys just straight through into you. You guys slam into the side of these guys. Where's the other cavalry, by the way? The other cavalry's over here. Just chasing these guys off. Yeah. This is just an absolute total collapse. Just the morale penalties that guy was providing. <laughs> Oh, that's ridiculous. Right, don't let your king get surrounded, though. That's never a good idea. Right, get you round here and just you chase off the peasant crossbowmen. Because right now, you're surrounded and being shot with crossbows. Which is not a good idea. Right, you just see off these guys. Thank you. And in a moment, hopefully they'll break. You are broken. You are broken. See off these guys. These guys are just going to take care of these guys. Probably the artillery should stop firing at this point. Maybe the artillery just stops firing. Because I think at this point it is just shooting at my own guys. Uh, yeah, I think it just killed one of my own general's bodyguards there. Just don't do that, please. You, go over there, take care of that. Continue the... Actually, there's not much point continuing the battle. Uh, actually, no, there is. Because I want to make sure none of these guys make it back to the city. Because anything that survives to the city, we will actually have to fight again. Probably, because not enough of this will have died for it to just be a total wrap-up. But that's... Ah, sadly, we don't have the cavalry for the pursuit. Which is a real shame. Uh, where are you? Uh, you... Get after anything that's still remotely strong, please. Ignore the army out on the field. Get after these guys. Where's that? Ah, oh, they're already escaping. No, sadly, a fair bit's going to make it back to the town. But we've killed... King Henri the Mean, which is nice. So, and, oh, that's that's a lot of dead French people too. I like the number of dead French people, including you can see the lines where the artillery hit, which is very, very nice indeed. And these armoured sergeants are just being knackered, which is lovely. At least we can take these guys down. Yeah, we got town militia and armoured sergeants we can shoot at least. That's fine. 
Well, there's still a few remnants, but to be honest, I think we've caught all we're going to be able to catch here. Let's see how well this went in the end. 500 remaining. All right, fine. So we've still got an effective fighting force, including all our artillery, so we can just walk straight to the city. And as for what's left there, well, technically, there's possibly still 900 men because these survivors will probably run into the city as well. So we've still got something to do in the city. But I think we've done most of what we need to. Arguably, we should have left him alive so we'd have all of the morale disadvantages when the actual siege occurred. And obviously, the captives are being executed. Lovely. Now, what have we actually got left here? Yeah, looks like... Looks like less than 900 odd to me. Maybe 900-ish. Uh, we'll have to see about that. And France has been reconciled. Bit late for that, to be honest. And, ah, oh, the spies have opened the gates too. Nice. Liking the spies. Right, Captain Noel. Good old Captain Christmas there. Uh, right, so we've got to smash our way past the walls. Though, actually, we don't need to. We've got the flipping gates open. So all of this artillery turned out to be completely bloody pointless. Though it was fun to, you know, kill King Henri the Mean by just kind of, you know, smashing him in the face with a giant boulder. That was entertaining. And all he's really got here is... Yeah, pretty much I just tell my dismounted Huskars to charge and they just chop down everything in front of them. Nice. So, two-part plan here, which is one, we probably want to... Actually, is this the right approach? That feels like a bit of a kill zone style approach. Probably what I actually want to do is just... Which is the right angle? That's not a terrible angle. I feel like this angle over here is a better angle because, yeah, there's a real kill zone going on leading in there if these towers are active so let's instead go over here and make this the insertion point and all i need is yeah all of my beautiful beautiful dismounted huskars just ready to start running in and if they do anything like put anything on the walls that's trying to stop me the artillery will literally tear apart the walls so screw that and if we can potentially draw their attention elsewhere by having a significant number of troops drawn up here, then we shall do it as well, and that will be fine. But really, all we want to do is have the infantry just charge in and smash everything. So, yes, I'm aware the gates were open. We were told it's fine. And we have got ourselves... Hang on, anything up there? No, nothing up there at all. And are you planning to actually stand and fight? No, I think you're not. Right, so just follow these guys... Back to the plaza, please. And there is... Ah, there is technically something going on here. So go on then. Um, artillery, just take down the towers while you're here. I mean, you've got nothing better to do, so you may as well just take down these towers. You might be able to take down, like, you know, one of them before it actually does anything. So in you go, lads. Don't worry. You've got armor. You've got upgraded weapons. You're fine. I know you're technically walking into trouble right now. Actually, never mind. We're literally smashing down the towers. Oh, I like that. That's pretty badass. Smashing down the towers while these guys are actually charging the gates. That's pretty damn cool. So they're trying to take down tower number two as well. So in you go, land. Don't worry. We have got artillery supporting you. <laughs> it's nice having artillery support. It's a good thing to have, damn it. So just any minute now, we should have... There's some... All of you missed. Well done. Hopefully the trebuchet will hit that. Nope, somebody managed to hit that. No, all of that was missing too, because some of that was the gateway. Some point we'll take down this flipping tower. Any minute, still 48. Come on, trebuchet. I kind of needed you to do that one correctly. Oh, there's actually some guys over here. Oh, that's fun. Well, if you guys want to stand over there, that's 100% fine. Let's just quickly bring you down. Oh, no, they're fleeing the walls. Boo, they realized I was just starting to think about that. Right. So these guys now basically just chase these guys down and we just engage in a massive slugging match on the plaza because we will very, very easily win that. Lovely. So let's just leave one unit back here just for the time being, just to finish off the crossbow militia. That's right here. Actually, there's a few of them. Uh, okay, hang on. Some of you guys just stay back here for the time being. Finish off the mercenary crossbow and whatever because apparently there's just a couple of guys chilling out by the gate here. Oh, they're already breaking. They're breaking like crazy. Lovely. Just finish these guys off, please. Send in some cavalry or something. Yeah, we just got some surviving crossbowmen at the back here. These guys will go down very fast. They're already... Apparently, they're trying to reload. They're not they're reloading to me. Look, they've got swords out and they're trying to fight in a straight-up melee against guys who are, like, you know, designed to do a melee. So this is not really what mercenary crossbowmen are for, whatever. Should have really just left them on the walls, moved them as I tried to take out the walls, and then used them to shoot these guys as they came into the city. Would have been much more effective. Anyway, screw that. All of these guys, just get over here and just take you guys out, please. So all of you just move forward, and these reinforcements will join you momentarily. 
good, good, good. In fact, actually, the mercenary crossmen are now being torn apart because, yeah, they're trying to retreat through streets that are literally full of my lads. So that will be 100% fine. Yep, they should be wiped out to the last man already, pretty much. Good, good, good. On we go. And this is just one of those slow grinding fights you put on 6x speed because, oh, Hang on, someone's dead. Probably their leader, to be honest. Uh, yep, enemy general's dead. And my percentage of allies killed just seems to hover pretty steadily at 4%. I'm losing the odd guy. I'm up to 5. But yeah, you can see that's just ticking up to 45, 46, 47, 48. I'm still at 5% killed. Pretty much, I've just brought superior troops. Marvellous. It's a good tactic bringing vastly superior troops to the battle. And as Captain Noel goes down, I guess you could say that for France... Christmas is cancelled. And here we go. Less dramatic than the end of Germany. It's the last few true Frenchmen. Because yes, indeed. At this point, any new Frenchmen that get put on the field will actually have been trained in Spain, not France. And I think that was actually it. They were just torn the hell apart. We didn't even see who the last guy was. They were just being murdered too quickly. Oh, that's a big-ass pile of dead French people. Right, in we go, and the settlement is happy. I'm going to occupy it without any trouble, and we're going to repair it up and retrain some guys and also build a large stone wall, because apparently it needs it, and France never bothered to pay for it. Now, you are my factioner. Is there any chance you've got any better from all this fighting we've been doing? No, literally nothing, unfortunately. He's... He's just got air apparent, which is plus one authority, but obviously the fact leader himself won't have that. So, no. Bit disappointing. Despite being a good general, he's not going to be a good king. So, that is indeed a bit of a shame. Right, still, that's France kicked out of the zone. Oh, look at that minimap now. Oh, now no one can deny that Central and Western Europe is very firmly in my grasp. That is very, very good indeed. And I could, at this point, just start sending him down towards Spain to mop up the French and deal with them once and for all. But we've already got this guy doing pretty much that. We've got this force here as well. That should probably actually start moving eastward towards Hungary. But actually, we've got the Innsbruck forces right here. They're pretty much at full strength. Yeah, screw it. Let's just get the Unsbrook forces moving over in that direction. I think that's actually looking okay. We'll leave behind, say, you and... Uh, who else is a bit injured? Honestly, you're actually in really good shape. We'll leave behind you for retraining. You guys, yes. just get over in this direction. Set Start water. getting over there. We'll Help out with the Hungarian situation. Now Set we just water. need all our armies to converge we'll on Hungary. Here. And with these forces safe to barrel over to Hungary, that means this force in Dijon. Yeah, I would say that Prince Borislav, his primary duty should remain the pursuit of the French. Don't let the bastards get away. We've got reinforcements waiting for him in Toulouse. And actually... Probably he could do with, yeah, yes. merging together some of these forces. Though, actually, he can just... No, let's get him actually on the move here. He can leave behind Orders, the siege team. equipment. Uh, no, that's taking the siege equipment. Leave behind all the siege equipment. Then he can just basically get on his way. He can retrain down in Toulouse. Pick up some new high-tech cannons that he's been promised down there. Very, very nice indeed. And that will all be fine. And Dijon is... Okay, maybe I should have slightly sacked Dijon. Right, let's just quickly get them some more troops. Send some horses over to Dijon. There we are. That's cheered them up. No end. Lovely. And we'll just get some new troops coming in there as well. Nice, nice, nice. And you are now heading down in this direction to join up with the forces in Toulouse. These guys retrained. Toss in some cannons. Very, very nice indeed. Yeah, Zaragoza will be completely screwed. And then we can just knock France out of this war full stop. And Torren of Nordby is... Moving mysteriously slowly because the game seems to have forgotten there's roads there. Sometimes that just happens. It happened more in Rome, especially around Siwa. But uh, yeah, apparently it's happened in Spain. There's blatantly roads there, but the game just doesn't really seem to want to acknowledge them. Right, I think that's all we can do this turn. So, ah, but no. I need to get a spy heading south to figure out what the bloody hell the Pope is planning. Because I don't like it one flipping bit. Anything else we need to do? I think we're okay. Usually yeah. take down to Nottingham and rest over there, Carl, the true king of Denmark. And other than that, I think everyone is fine for the time being. Nothing urgent? Fine. Move it on a little bit then. Now, what's France's response going to be to all of this? Probably to basically fall back to Zaragoza with everything they've got and just sort of hope they can hold Zaragoza. 
the Venetians are still bumbling around in our territory, though hopefully now, with the Hungarians moving out and the Imperials gone, they should be able to actually make it back home. They can just go to Venice and chill out and not backstab me, because it would be a really stupid idea if they did, Venice. It would be a- there we go. You just work around the outside of me and don't backstab me. That's lovely. Oh, Milan's flipping rioting at this point. And the Hungarians have lifted the siege at Bran, probably realising it was a stupid bloody idea. Nice. <sighs> and somebody just died. Possibly the Hungarians assassinated someone, or possibly someone died attempting to assassinate someone. Something happened, maybe a spy attempted to infiltrate Bran and was caught. Not sure. It's possible the general in Bran was just killed by the Hungarians, because they've got damn good assassins, it must be sad. Oh, a flipping papal state spy inside Milan. That's just what I bloody need. The public orders... No. No, your popiness. No. Oh, it's as I feared. The Pope has declared war. He's a Danish Pope. This is quite frankly just a Danish civil war. Oh, no. Oh... Oh, that's sad. Well, on the plus side, now we know what we need to do with all those bloody armies. And where are the bloody Mongols going? <laughs> right, we need to... Oh, wait, hang on. All right, three of them have naffed off in that direction. The rest of them are now heading south in a hurry. Right, this is... This is all interesting. This is all very interesting. All right. And now there's just a big cluster of them where they've been before. They just like being in a big cluster. Right there, that's... That's fine. The rebels head south and then you chase off some Portuguese. Thank you, pirates. We've got... The Pope is dead! Right. Okay, good. So, the Pope declared war on me, then immediately passed on. Okay, I might be able to turn this to my advantage, right? Papal election. Now, I'm not going to vote for myself, okay? I'm going to vote for the Venetians. Because the Venetians like me. Then I'll be reconciled. Then I can get the Pope to call off this nonsense. So I'm just going to vote for the Venetian guy. Because he likes me. And that should be a guaranteed win. Because then even if everyone else tosses their strength behind the Spanish guy. It won't be enough. Here we go. And it turns out literally everyone and I've been reconciled. Okay, good. Uh, generally that happens when the Pope dies anyway. When the Pope dies it's fine. Yep, I know we've got a Pope. Pope Luca the missionary. And I know about the result. There's a lot of pop-ups. Right, Milan needs to be, like, sorted out, like, flipping now, because we've got trouble. Um, probably mainly caused by bloody spies. And, okay, the war's off. <laughs> the war's been immediately cancelled. <laughs> oh, good. So, luckily, the Pope died under entirely not mysterious circumstances. And, in fact, I could, if I wanted to, immediately now request a new crusade <laughs> against Jeddah. That would be a really weird crusade. Uh, but I could get a crusade going against the Sicilians. I bet I could buy my way to that. Yeah, he's warlike. So logically... It's secretly female! Oh, you never see that! I've only managed to achieve that once! Like, by accident. Because some uh, priests actually get the secretly female perks. They're just nuns disguised as monks or whatever. And then actually, if you can get that person to be a cardinal and then get that person elected as pope, you can actually end up with a female pope. I've literally seen it once in my hundreds of hours playing this game. And now it's just happened by accident because the Venetians happen to have a really flipping holy woman. So we have got the first female pope. The first female pope. <laughs> nice. Well, isn't that just marvellous? And there's Bloody lots of things too. Papal states call off the war. They just flipping started. Excellent. The papal states and Venice also cancelled their alliance. Okay, so Venice stood with me. We've also got... We've got Dan of Nordby has just come in. It's a very day-to-day -day modern name next to all of what we've seen so far. Right, how are you? Social drinker, sociable, poor speaker. Uh, talent with numbers, talent for command. Okay, bonus on trading. Uh, maybe we'll just send him somewhere where he can get on with trading. We've got a lot of decent traders, which is good, but it would be nice if we had, like, you know, more people that were good at, like, I don't know, fighting wars or being king. We just really need someone who's actually good yes. at being king, and we haven't got many of those right now. Right, what else we bloody got here? We've got Mets is apparently ready to upgrade. Here, have some flipping money and go away and stop bothering me. 
And Yassi's ready to upgrade. Here, have some money and go away and stop bothering me. And also, Venice is the most advanced faction. And Genoa was besieged by the Papal States. Then they couldn't be bothered anymore. Then Hungary... Oh, good, that was a Hungarian spy that was detected. That's no problem at all. Speaking of which, a brand. That means we can now retrain these troops, though. I can speed that up by my doing lord. some merging. Oh, very, very nice indeed. Yeah. Right. My lord. This is suddenly looking better than it was. I'm pleased with all of this, so just repair and repair and repair. Right, got some good stuff going on there. And you, meanwhile, head down over here. You take out that guy, and then we've now got some decent stacks here ready to move against Bucharest. We've got ourselves a new army. Let's just quickly move a new... I know there's already a watchtower there, that's fine. We've already got a new guy right flipping here. So now we've got some good armies ready to take on the Hungarians. We've got this guy moving in this direction, so we've got some new forces moving in to take out the French, and arguably, most important all, I don't know why you're moving so bloody slowly, just moving really slowly. Right here, we have got, no, that's a priest, we have got Leon, including, oh, the handsome, we've got a very handsome guy, though, apparently he likes hiding his face in a suit of armour, so maybe it's just, you know, a rumour that he's handsome. Can we actually get over to, I could begin the siege... If I just use my cavalry, how much cavalry do I have? Will make them fear Probably not enough, to be perfectly honest. Um, That probably also wouldn't give me many build points. And yeah, you know what, screw it. It probably won't actually save me much time. Let's just get you over to here. And next turn, Leon, you are absolutely flipping screwed. Sadly, I don't have any cannons with me. But speaking of cannons, I believe there should be more ready to train at Yep. More ready to train at Toulouse. Ah, oh, loving it. Absolutely flipping loving it. So this guy's going to arrive. He's going to pick up some cannons. And we're going to take cannons. We're going to see cannons actually, you know, at work for the first time at Zaragoza. Hell, we could just actually uh, walk over Pamploma. Because citadels are nowhere near as scary as they used to be the moment you start getting cannons in play. Which is very, very nice indeed. Ooh, heavy armour. Wouldn't mind having a nice citadel and all of that here. There's a cannon maker. Ooh, jousting lists. That would be nice to have too. Milan desperately needs some help. We need to figure out how to bloody help them out. I don't know. We need to get an actual good general in that part of the world, but that's potentially going to be a bit difficult. Oh, yeah, we had the flipping earthquake here as well, didn't we? Yes, we totally had an earthquake here. Right, probably should uh, fix that up too as best we can. There you go. Don't worry. I've fixed it all. Lovely. Right, everything looking pretty good now. In fact, actually, public order should just have shot up thanks to the fact that, uh, yeah, we're no longer excommunicated. We are no longer... Nope, everything's fine. Everyone's okay with everything. Everything should be okay. And that leaves us just one crucially important thing to see if I can make happen right now. So Odessa, low tax rate, got a church in it and everything. Right, so army, prepare to step out of Odessa, please, uh, outside of its zone of control. Right, Odessa, currently just, you know, crappy little basic town here. My um, Mongol uh, friends, yeah, I've speak, got this idea I for you. I would like to... Oh, flip, I can't give them a town just wanted to gift them the town. Why can I not just gift them the town? Gosh darn it. Oh well, never mind. I was kind of hoping I could give them the town, but no. I think they need to have taken at least one town before you're allowed to, because right now they're a horde faction, so they're playing by different rules. So sadly, I can't actually just gift them Odessa. Right. The bumbling continues, at least for the time being. Though we do not have the odd situation, I need to go and find what's going on over... Ah! Very good, Lord. Okay, I think we have just seen what's going on here. Yeah, they've started actually splitting up. They've sent no one right. guy over here to fight Once this guy. One guy's come over here to fight this guy and take out Trebizond. No, don't, don't do that. Don't flip and do that. Right, although that place is actually well stocked. They might actually theoretically win. Okay, we might actually be witnessing the Mongols waking up and starting to do something. If they're willing to go and attack the Turks, maybe, at some flipping point, who bloody knows, they might be willing to come and attack my lads too. I just don't know. All right, get back in the town. The plan didn't work. Not yet anyway. Also, build a church. Let's get some more flipping Catholics going on here. And excellent news here, we have got the artillery started to show up at Antioch. Let's get that straight into flipping production. Don't worry so much about the bombard, that's kind of a fun nice to have. But yeah, really what you want is these guys over here. These guys are fun indeed. So, we've got that in production. I think there's... 
I think there's no. I think we've got more coming in over here as well. Can we get these in? Yeah, we've got more coming over here as well. Right. Get those into production. This is all very, very fun indeed. And we've got Cannon Foundry. Right. Acre, Citadel. Like 3,200 for the highest tier of cannon production facility. Incredible. And with that, yeah, we can get the Serpentine. Attack versus troops, 63. Missiles impale several men. Very long range. Good morale, can't hide. Yeah, that's what we want. Get that in production as soon as flipping possible. And we may as well get that spy heading in the direction I was planning to send him anyway. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty flipping glad, as it turns out, that the Papal States kind of, you know, decided against this war because this is what was heading in my direction. One decent army with artillery, another decent army. So basically, probably about, in total, really, uh, only a stack and a third. And then we've got the new Pope right there, Pope Luca the Missionary, the first female Pope. Very, very nice indeed. And they've got more down there. They could have sent loads more. So whatever happened down here, by the way? No, whatever happened down here, I'm not sure who was besieging Corinth. Uh, they weren't actually able to pull it off. So that's interesting. Oh, but the Venetians have taken back. Oh, wait, hang on. No, that was that was never in question. Sorry, but they have not taken back. Fine, okay. I thought they'd taken back a region, but no. It's pretty much as it ever was there. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say that is enough for now. But... Next time, we are going to absolutely flipping crush the Spanish, take their one city off them, and then it's down to a flipping citadel. Over in France, you will get to see cannons underway for the very first time. And over in the Middle East, I am actually finally training some actual anti-infantry specialised artillery, which is absolutely marvellous good fun. And it would appear, rather, that the Mongols have actually just flipping woken up and have decided to go to war against someone else. Quite frankly, I think I should probably be offended. But, hopefully, this means once they've woken up, they will actually turn their attention to Adana and or Aleppo sooner or later. So, we might actually have a Mongol conflict on the flipping horizon. We've got troops coming in from the north. We've got troops pouring over to Hungary. We are approaching the end game of Europe, I would say, here. And that is the Mongols very much the next big challenge. But then, then we might skip forward in time a little bit because there are some even bigger challenges coming later in the game. But first, we need to wrap up the Mongols and they might finally be ready for a scrap. Hopefully, anyway. And all that's to come very, very soon indeed, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you very much and goodbye. Oh no! Oh dear! America's decided they do not like us! Just want to finish off China. I can die happily. Well, not happily because there's nuclear fire involved, but moderately happily. There we go! I've just started... Oh god. The Earth was fun, wasn't it? We can all agree, the Earth was great.